We're live. Good evening, everyone. I see there's some people in the chat. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the light a bit because it's a bit bright. Let's go with this. Let's just see in the chat what's going on. Let me bring my mic forward. Sorry. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Wasn't it a beautiful day? At least here. Hello. Hi, Sophie. Hello, Leslie. VF555. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. Hello, Lady Love. Hello. You're in the house. Um, nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. I just thought uh, I'd do a little live stream after a talk I went to. Thank you. Not without my needs. <laughs> after a, a, a talk I went to yesterday. Let me just start off with a little song. I'll keep it very short. If I were a boy, even just for a day. I'd wake up. I don't even know the lyrics. Let me just look them up. <laughs> That's a different one. I'd roll out of bed in the morning, throw on what I wanted, then go. If I were a boy, I think that's a um, an apt song for this evening. Oh, hello, Sophie. Thank you so much for, it looks like a dancing pair blowing hearts and your Danish krona, krona is that what you call it? 25 DK. Um, thank you so much. And hello, everyone, for joining me. Oh, hola, Guille. Hiya, you don't answer my text. We have split. What text? I always get back to you. Sometimes it takes me a while, but uh, I always do. So uh, I will check. Boys keep swinging. All right. So uh, what happened yesterday? Yesterday, um, there was a business networking event for gay men that I've attended before. I know the organizer. I've known him whew, for over 15 years, I think. Um, and it was always a gay professional networking event. Somebody says hello from Sweden. Hello from Turf Island. Um, so because of the lockdown, uh, that event uh, ha hadn't happened for a while. Uh, now he's uh, started doing them again. So I went along, uh, I think a month ago. And yesterday, um, a guest speaker um, had been announced who <sighs> it just sounds so crazy when you even have to say it. A person who identifies as a non-binary femme trans gay man who was going to talk about their experience. In other words, a woman. So we um I just thought I, I have I have to go along. I, I need to I need to be there and hear them talk about themselves as a gay man in front of gay men at a gay man's event. Uh, I, I just thought I have to see this for myself. Um, It's it's kind of kind of tricky, kind of hard to talk about, to be honest, because it makes me it makes me quite angry. And I was very angry on my way there, and I thought I'm just going to go. I'm going to listen to their talk, and then afterwards there will be questions and answers. I'll ask questions. So um, I thought save it to the end. Try to be respectful, but then I thought, can I can I do that, uh, or am I just gonna? Am I just going to kick off and like, what will that look like? And will I just be like a raving lunatic? Um, will I get kicked out? Who knows? Um, somebody in the chat just asked a trans man stroke woman who identifies as a gay man. So Fiona, this is a woman who identifies as a non-binary man who happens to be a gay man. Um, so it's a woman who's in relationships with men. but she gives it a slightly different twist. Um, so I thought, what's that going to be like? I was a bit nervous before going as well. And I thought, what are the other gay men? How are the other gay men going to respond to this talk? Are they going to go along with it? 
so somebody said um so a straight woman basically yeah uh <laughs> in normal speak <laughs> how is it even possible ask somebody else uh we'll get into it we'll get into it so i just thought go along and then see how you feel i went with a friend um if this friend is watching right now thank you very much for coming that made a real difference um that it, it was great that you were there um so um i, th I just thought see how you feel um and then um see how it goes so um I actually know this person a little bit because I used to go to, uh, used to be part of a, a small gay choir in London. And the same organization that run that also ran dancing classes. And this person, this lady, took some of the dancing classes. And then twice a year, we do like a, a performance, an event. Um, so I'd seen her and I could never figure out is this is this is this a, a very odd looking boy or a very odd looking girl? If I'm just completely honest about it, right? Because most of the time, most of the time you can tell if someone's male or female. Most of the time you can see when someone uh, tries to present as the sex that they are not. Um, some people say, "Oh, you can't tell." Uh, I think most of the time you can, but sometimes there are cases where, you know, it's a bit like, "Oh," so I was a bit intrigued. Um, She's very small, she's tiny, very thin, um, has a receding hairline and usually pink or green or orange or purple hair. Um, so um, it was just something odd. And if if I was to uh, compare it to something, what comes to mind is, is like, imagine a very colorful parrot who's, who's lost most of the feathers and just has a few colorful feathers. <laughs> On, on its head still. Um, something, I don't know, uh, I'm always quite drawn to old people, if you like, um, and I was just curious. And once we chatted and uh, just briefly just said, have a nice show, that kind of stuff. And I, I couldn't quite work it out. Um, and also I have to say sometimes when, sometimes if, you, if you're wrong, then I think that's quite refreshing. It's kind of nice. But uh, most of the time, obviously, we we do know. Anyways, um, so it wasn't until after I'd left that um, gay choir that I then um, saw some of her Facebook posts and saw uh, the scars on the arm um, where the skin was grafted to form a, uh, I can't call it a penis, a Frankenthalus. Um, and I just said, okay, so, okay definitely female. Um, she has a very flat chest um, and I didn't see any of the, the normal double mastectomy scars. But then if you look closely, it's just, because um, she posts these pictures, um, just under the nipple, you can see the scar. So she must have had a, a very small, very small breast, basically. Um, so they can just um, make an incision underneath the God, the stuff I'm talking about. Make an incision underneath the, the nipple, take the breast tissue out, and then um, you don't have like the, the lines like that, which are more traditional. So, um, and I read some of her posts and it's all woo woo to the max, but I thought I want to hear their story and I want to see how they sort of justify calling themselves a gay man when they're female. So, Got into the room with my friend, uh, we got our name badge, and there were only nine of us in the room, including the speaker. She goes by the name Ed. And uh, as I said before, Ed's quite tiny. She wore like a leather jacket and some um, tight jeans. Um, blue hair, I think it was last night. And uh, I just, when I see her, I just think of, a, of of some, yeah, strange little bird, if you see what I mean. I don't mean that in a, in a nasty way. And there's something very kind of fragile and vulnerable. That's how she strikes me. Um, and a, a part of me wants to be very nice to her and very caring. And I'm interested in, um, I'm just gonna make this light a bit less bright. Just a, whoa, sorry. 
I just wanted to show you off my chest hair, which I finally started growing in my 40s. Um, because she's so tiny and she kind of looks very odd, I don't know, I just I just, I just felt, felt like I had an instinct to, to be caring, I guess. Um, good morning, Chrissy T. Ed, yeah, exactly. Uh, what a name. Uh, I don't know why she chose that name. Um, F... Uh, VF555, if she took puberty blockers. I thought that initially because, you know, I thought maybe that's why she had such a, 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 a small chest to begin with. But uh, no, um, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in a bit more on her transition journey in a bit. She doesn't like to call it transitioning. Anyways, what do you call it nowadays? Before she went down the medical path. So um, she's in the room and she's chatting away. Um, and she's got that typical... Not everybody gets it, but she did it. It's that typical trans man sort of, you know, that testosterone voice. Uh, it's, it's called the vocal fry. That, um, and there was lots of nervous laughter, which is very, uh, it's a <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, she's just chatting away. And then um, I sat down with my friend and we sort of kept to ourselves. I was, I was, I didn't know what to expect. I just felt uh, so pissed off about the whole thing that we're even in a situation where at a so-called gay men's event, you have a woman uh, talking to a bunch of gay men about being a gay man. It's just <laughs> absolutely nuts. Anyways, we sat at the back. It was a small room, just a small room. And as I said, there were only like, like a no, sort of a living room size, I guess. There are only nine of us, including our speaker, including Ed. And then she started talking. Um, a bit later on, she hinted at having ADHD. Um, I don't know if that was just a, a joke. I think it's serious because she seems to have a lot of nervous energy. She speaks incredibly fast. And uh, again, there's a lot of nervous. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of, of Beavers and Butthead. Um, so what did she, let me just fill you in a bit more about her, her journey. So she's from Canada and she is about 31 now at the moment. And uh, she realized when she was 20 that she was non-binary. Uh, and as soon as she realized that, um, she's like, I want to have surgeries and I want to go all the way. Um, in Canada, it only took three months to get diagnosed and to start taking testosterone. So she's been taking that for a, a good 10, 11 years. She then moved from Canada to the UK, and then um, she sort of had to get re-diagnosed in the UK by the NHS. And she, um, she really doesn't have many good things to say about the NHS um, anyways. Um, it took a long time, so she had two appointments that were almost like a year apart, and she had she had to wait about 17 months before she even got the first appointment. So a lot of time passes before anything happens, but in that time, she only had the two appointments. And, and this is where I'm like, oh, you just had two appointments, that's it. Anyway, she was referred for surgery. Um, to create a so-called, what I call the Frankenthalus, because I just cannot call that a penis. It is not a penis by any stretch of the imagination. There is, you know, as, as a man, a, a natural penis-bearing man, and as someone, as a gay man who's been up close and personal with a fair few penises in my life, uh, I can um, say that there is there is nothing like a dick, nothing in the world. There is nothing you can pick that is anything like a dick. And you can't make it out of arm skin. Duh. Anyways. Um, so she had... Okay, and this surgery is huge surgery. It's like this is radical major surgery. So it needs to be done in stages. And so but at this point, she already had her breast removed. Um, she'd been on testosterone for about 10 years. She had her first stage of the phalloplasty, 
which means that's where they take the skin of the arm. They roll it up into some kind of flesh tube. They create a urethra and they stick it to the groin. And then they took this, they took skin grafts from her butt and they stuck that on her arm so that could heal again. Okay. And now she's waiting for stage three. However, something went wrong uh, at stage two. Okay, so stage one is where they take the skin, they roll it up, they stick it to the groin, they take the skin from the bum and they put that back on the arm, that's stage one. So stage two is, there's different options, but that's where they would connect the, the urethra they've created. They would connect that to the actual bladder. Uh, so you can um, stand up and pee, stand up and pee, just like a man. Um, Oh God, all the stuff that they go through. And then uh, they can create a, a so-called scrotum. Again, that's all just taking skin, skin from other areas and sticking that down there. Uh, and uh, removing the vagina. Um, she's also had a hysterectomy. So that's all stage two kind of thing. And then stage three is what sh where she wants to have uh, an erectile uh, implant put in because she, at the moment, she doesn't feel whole, not having erectile function. Um, she will never have erectile function because whatever they, you know, they, they put like a, a pumpy thing in. So <laughs> she can go squeak, 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 look, I'm erect. Obviously, that is nothing. It is nothing like a penis. Come on. You know, I know. <laughs> I can't go into too much detail. You can't. You can't fake that shit with arm and a pump. I mean, come on, what are you talking about? And she might then have testicular uh, implants as well. But anyways, it will... <sighs> so I'm like, well, is there a stage four? Like, or is she, if, if, if you know, everything's done and it's all healed, is she then going to get a pot of yogurt out next time that she, you know, she's intimate with someone and splash it on the face and say, look, I just came in your face, ha ha. And if she doesn't do that, she feels incomplete. Anyways, it's just all kind of mad and it makes me angry because this is just as you have all these dudes trying to appropriate women's bodies. Here we have a woman appropriating the male physique, men's bodies and men's sexual function. It's... <clears throat> Anyways, um, there was a complication. She said it was a minor complication after her stage two surgery. Um, I don't know what it is. They haven't diagnosed it yet. So all, all she knows is that she, um, when did she have that? That was 2020. She had the second stage phalloplasty. So that was August. So for a year and a half, she's been dealing with whatever this minor complication is. And she doesn't even know what the complication is because it hasn't been diagnosed yet. Um, what does she want in the future in 2024? That's when she's hoping to get stage three. Um, which is the erectile pompy thing. And then her revision surgery in 2023. Um, that's what she's hoping for. On top of that, there's post-op depression that she's been talking about, um, that she's been dealing with, but she still believes that this is absolutely the right thing for her to have done. And she's much happier than she used to be, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm authentic, I'm now my authentic self, blah, 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 you know, the usual. Oh, it's, it's just kind of mad. Um, she does mention, somebody in the chat just mentioned that there's uh, a 50% complication rate with phalloplasties. I guess it depends on what stage it is, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy surgery. It's like they're just treating people like flesh Lego, like just like they're meat Lego blocks and you can just cut and paste and do whatever. And obviously, she she's talking about bodily autonomy and my body is mine. Da di da di da di da. Somebody just said it's like invasion of the body snatchers. Absolutely, I've said this before. I might do a video about that, uh, where I use clips from the film. It's just and and it's not just that they have the surgeries just for themselves. It's it's like that's their ticket into manhood in this case, into gay manhood. You know, it's like a rite of passage. And it's interesting to me why she, because as soon as she realized, it, she said that she was non-binary, she wanted to go all the way. 
So I, I want to know why, like what were you trying to do? Um, Guille just asked, am I a horrible person because I don't feel sorry for her? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but what I did know is as soon as I was in the room with her, although I felt angry, I didn't want to take it out on her. I didn't want to be, on the one hand, I wanted to be direct and say, excuse me, being a gay man means you're a male homosexual and we don't need this appropriation. We don't need all this uh, rewriting of the script on what it means to be a gay man. Thank you very much. No, no, thank you. But when I was in that room, I was just a bit stunned by the reality of it, that this, that like she truly, truly believes it. And then my friend afterwards said, the delusion is real. So I thought if I come, if I become combative or confrontational, she's not going to change her mind. Um, the other gay men in the room might then completely disregard anything that I might say just because of the energy. Um, and I also thought, what if if I say something that's really, 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 really going to trigger her dysphoria and hurt her feelings? Okay. Um, Basically, I wanted to be nice. And that's just how I felt in the moment. So I felt kind of conflicted between, you know, can I do a Posey Parker and go, well, in this case, she's a woman. She's a woman. Um, I did say stuff. I'll get to that. I'll get to all of that story. I've been talking for a while already. I haven't even gone into what she said. Um, so blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, she said about, you know, the, the stage three, the erectile implant, this pump thing, there's a 30% chance of developing an infection, which would mean removing the implant, letting the skin freaky flesh tube heal, and then have another surgery to try again, okay? Even if it is successful, it will eventually have to be replaced. That's, I guess, just like breast implants. Um, and you don't know whether that will need to be replaced within a year, in 20 years. This is the never ending, the never ending story, ah, ah, ah. you know, the never ending surgery cycle. Basically, she's had at least four surgeries so far. And, um, uh, Deb, you just asked all on the NHS in the UK, the surgeries that she's had. Yes. I don't know where she had the, the the breast amputation done but yeah now uh, so she was going on about the nhs being shit and uh, the way they question is wrong and the waiting lists are too long but there is a practical issue which is that in the uk only two and a half persons can do this surgery and it's two and a half because one only does it part-time so there's only one place let me just look it up where is it it's it's called St. Peter's Andrology Centre in London. That's the only place where they can do these surgeries because it's so highly specialised. You can't just go, oh, I want one of those, and just, just you know, there's not like a vending machine of, of penises. Um, it's a very specialised surgery. So, again, they're training some people up. Oh, someone's in the chat called Willoughby. I thought it's India Willoughby in the house, but no, it's Bianca. Hello. Oh, Bianca says, cis men get the pump implant too. Uh, Bianca, there is no such thing as a cis man. There are men and there are women. So you're talking bullshit. And they get the pump implant too. So, okay, so what's the difference between a man getting a pump implant in his penis and a woman getting an implant pumpy thing in the rolled up skin of her arm? I think the difference is quite clear. And I really don't appreciate you, again, trying to make it like it's the same thing. It's a false equivalent. This is absolutely not the same. I don't know who you are, um, but you're talking absolute bullshit. Cis men get the pump in plan too. And they have an actual penis. And now you're comparing a man with impotence or erectile dysfunction to a woman who's never had a penis in the first place. Like, how? How can you do that? Stupid. That, ugh. 
It's like you get this all the time, all these stupid false equivalences. It's the same. This 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 woman, she, she did the same in one of her posts. Oh, no, cis men get it too. Me. Well, you're not a man. You're not a man. You're a woman. And you don't have a dick, okay? You've got some arm flesh dangling from your groin. That's not a dick. <sighs> so. Where was I? It's just so stupid when people say stuff like that. Has she said anything else? Can't see it. So, she did her talk. What did she say? The talk was meant to be about... Oh, sorry, just to, to wrap that up. Yes, yeah, so she was saying, oh, NHS long waiting list. Well, it's not like it's not like you can just magic all these surgeons out of out of the sky and and make them do these surgeries. Uh, and they're really intense, super complicated surgeries. That's why they're done in all these stages. You know, it's not just like hey, fucking hell. Um, and when she got the date for the first stage of the surgery, she wrote on her Facebook, oh, the dick stork has sent me a message. And I just went, the dick stork? Whatever they're gonna be doing, that's whatever you're gonna end up with, that is not a dick. Don't call it a dick. That's not a dick. Bianca Willoughby is a troll, yeah, whatever. See, okay, I'm gonna show you something, right? Here, okay? This is not a dick. This is a dildo. It's made of silicone. It's not a dick. It doesn't feel like a dick, but it looks like one. And it looks a hell more like a dick than whatever she's got going on, this uncooked pastry situation in between her legs. At least here you get the veins, you get the texture, you get, you know, it's an imitation dick at the end of the day. That looks more like a dick than whatever she's got. I only bought that just to show it in this video, by the way. So, um, yeah, so there's, there's obviously a supply and demand problem. So just to say, oh, the NHS is shit, the NHS is shit, it's, it's again, it's, it's, it, it's so, oh, like there's no perspective with these people. Okay. Um, so her story, um, she said something about, um, other people recognized that she was trans before she did. Um, she was talking about the social pressures of being a girl. She didn't talk about it that much, but that was something that stood out. And I thought, okay, here we have a girl who doesn't, <laughs> somebody just said, <laughs> when I showed you. The deal, though, it's okay, Menno. We know you can get the real thing wherever you want it. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Okie dokie. There's a whole story behind why I bought that, but that's that's for another time and maybe not for this channel. Um, anyways, so here's, here's a girl who struggled with the social pressures of being a girl. She didn't really go into too much into detail about what they were. But that's what I think is interesting. And she was a tomboy. And then um, she talked to, okay, so in terms of social pressure, she was talking about reproduction as a woman, right, as a girl, that yeah, there's this pressure to reproduce, to, to, have, to get married and to have kids. Now, there's plenty of, of women who don't do that and they're still women. Duh. It's like, do you have to go and, and have your arm, uh, the skin taken off in order to not have to do any of that? It's like, ugh, ugh. Hello, somebody says hello, Julia Wiltman. Hi. Oh, hey, Joey in the house. Joey, Joey Bright is in the house, everyone. She's been doing amazing videos. I say amazing, but that's because I know she's amazing. I haven't watched them yet. Ugh, there's so much to catch up with, but I want to see the one that you just with, with, did with the two trans widows. Um, I've already seen people on social saying that was a, a very good one. Right, um, so. It just seems to me like this is just a girl who just didn't quite fit in and um, thought, okay, the only way to be able to deal with that is to, you know, jump into another box or whatever. 
And then she's, she said something about lesbians, which I found so deeply offensive. And I don't use the word offensive that often or that easily or that much. She said that she knew there are some lesbians who went lesbian so much that they jumped into the M box. M meaning men or male. So let me just run that by you again. She said some lesbians went lesbian so much they jumped into the male box. And I wonder if anyone else picked that up because what she's basically saying is the most lesbian thing you can do is to unbecome a woman. Now, that's homophobia for you, right there. She felt, as a young girl, a kinship to gay men. Some joked that she was really a gay man trapped in a girl's body. I do have this rule that I think, see the human. As much as you disagree with someone, as much as something angers you, try to see the human. So I do try to do that. And I thought, okay, she felt a kinship with gay men because she felt like she was the odd one out. She probably connected with gay guys because, you know, they can be the odd one out. But like, just feeling kinship with someone or a group of people doesn't mean that you are that group of people. Um, it's like I could say I feel a kinship with women. What do I mean by that? I've always got on with with women quite well um that doesn't make me a woman it, it's like the thinking here that they present themselves as if they're the progressive people and the open-minded people but they're not this is all based on regressive stereotypes the social pressures of being a girl that stereotypes she's internalized it and she thinks the best way to do that is to have all these surgeries. And now she says she's her authentic self, even though it's a lifetime of surgery uh, and hormone treatment um, and, and, and taking the language of another group of people that already exists to, to describe yourself. And by doing that, she's completely uprooting what that language meant in the first place. So, and then at 20, she realized... Um, Hey, I'm I'm gender queer. First, she was like gender queer, and then um, at the end, one of the gay guys went, "What is what? What is what? What did you use? Gender queer? Uh, what does that mean?" And she's like, "Oh well, you know, uh, uh, I mean, now I say I'm non-binary, but then I thought I was gender queer. What's the difference between non-binary and gender queer?" She didn't really have an answer for it. She just said, um, "Oh, oh, gender queer is a bit more punk." Uh, VF555, how did gay men respond to this? I hope by laughing. No. They were nodding along and going, oh, oh, oh. And afterwards they went, oh, stunning and brave. There was one, <laughs> there was one who was set in front of me and he kept going like. <laughs> so at least I knew I wasn't the only one. Because the cheek of it, it's the stem. There is a woman just because you've had bits cut off your body and taken out, and other bits taken from one area and stuck somewhere else. Suddenly, you're a gay man now. You're going to tell us you're a gay man? No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, as somebody in the chat just said, homophobia, but make it modern. Yeah, sprinkle it with rainbow <laughs> magic. Fucking hell. Um, okay, so kinship with gay man. She wanted to go all the way. Uh, every time she had sur surgery, she would ask herself, um, have I gone too far? Was this the right thing to do? And then she would have post-surgery depression. Hey, but I'm happy. I'm so happy. There was an interesting way that she described having 
dysphoria. She said, it's like you're house sitting. You're in somebody else's house and you've got lots of ideas of what you want to do about the house, but you, um, you're not supposed to because it's not your house. So that's um, a metaphor that she gave. She wanted to um, make her body her own, even though your body is your own. Never mind. Um, and if you see pictures of this person, you might think, oh, that's kind of like a quirky, odd looking boy. Then when you see the pictures of her as a girl, that's when it really hits me because I'm like, this is the person that's speaking here. And it's like, this, this is a girl, this is a female person. She's telling us she's a gay man. That's nuts. <sighs> um, okay. Finding the right testosterone dose for her wasn't, um, was a bit tricky, but, she, but once she found it, it was like, you know, she put on the right lenses or the right glasses and she could see clearly. I'm just going to have a look at the chat. Sorry, just a second. Leslie, she sounds insufferable. Well, this is it. And that's why, like my friend said, the delusion is real. She's completely gone with the woo-woo. This is it. She even said in a Facebook post, my story is not a, a female story. It is a trans story. I asked her a question about that afterwards. So I'll get to that in a bit. Um, okay. Uh, also, she's an author. She's written about 49 books in the last nine or 10 years. And all these books are gay romance novels, mostly about cis gay men, according to her. So she's focusing on, on the actual gays. Here is a woman telling herself that she is a gay man, writing steamy, sexy romance novels about gay men. And I wonder if there is a deal, is, is a degree there of fetishization going on that we see so often with men who believe to be women and the way they, they write about that. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not going to read them. <laughs> okay. Um, what else did you say? Da, 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 da. Right. Her big thing was at the end, she's like, when she thought about all the surgeries and stuff, she asked herself, do I put my foot out of the door and go down this medical path? Or do I just stay as I am and limp along? So she's very happy, despite the complications and everything. Um, she's very happy that she's gone down this path and she's now her authentic self. And she says, honor yourself, live authentically when she's done the exact the exact opposite um there was also somewhere where she a point where she said that you know as a woman you're supposed to be pretty and you're supposed to meet a rich guy and that's it i'm like i don't know where she gets that nonsense from and why she took it so serious she didn't feel comfortable with it and then she went through you know the whole hog of whatever she did and it's like well this just shows you how Again, it's all about stupid stereotypes and people get lost. They get lost in it, you know. Um, they get lost in, in gender. And then they think that the only way out is the surgeries and the, and the hormone treatment. Anyways, so she finished talking. She's, she talked so quick. Um, she's got, I don't know whether she's got like a, a slight speech impediment as well. She's got quite a strange way of speaking. Um, anyway, there was applause by the eight of us in the audience. Not by me. <laughs> and then um, time for questions. So there was a woman in the audience, like an actual woman, not trying to pretend to be anything else, who just said, oh, it's so brave of you to share this story, blah, blah, blah. And the two gay guys did exactly the same thing. Uh, one had the question about what is genderqueer. And I thought, okay, what's happening here? Like, do they really believe this? Like, really? And I thought they probably do. Because 
there's so many of us, you know, lesbians and gay men, we know what it's like to, you know, struggle with your sexuality, to uh, the whole coming out thing can be a, a long, difficult process, finding yourself, all that kind of stuff. So I think that they were connecting with her on that level and they were thinking, oh, I went through X, Y, Z. She's gone through X, Y, Z. Therefore, this is where we can relate to her. And they probably thought him, he, um, this is how we can relate to her and uh, why it's so brave that she's talking about this and so candidly, blah, blah, blah. And also there's just the way that she looks. She looks like a fragile little bird. So I think that just naturally, as it does with me, um, evokes some, you know, wanting to care <laughs> and be sweet. So put those two together and maybe they've never ever heard somebody talk about this, like in the flesh. Maybe they've never met someone like this. So they could be quite impressed by that and or fascinated. So all these things put together, maybe th that's why they didn't see what was really going on here. So then I thought, I'm going to have to ask a question. How do I do that in a way that they don't think I'm just, you know, a nutcase or I didn't want to come out too aggressive. So I just asked, okay, I said, you now identify as a gay man. How are you received by gay men in gay men spaces? I said, are there gay men who question it and who say, hang on, you're not a gay man? Um, or do you get gay guys being very supportive? And if they are supportive, do you think that's real? Or do you think that kind of virtue signaling or pretending and they don't really truly accept you as a gay man? And then she goes, oh, that's an interesting question. Because <laughs> um, she kept doing that. And she said it was it was a bit of both. And then I thought, okay, well, now I, I thought I'll build up, right, with my questions. So then I thought, I said, okay, well, there are, and I just used the trans lingo for a bit. I said, um, there are some trans men to whom it's very important um, that they are seen as, as men. Um, where, but there are others to whom it's very important that their femaleness is acknowledged who say that underneath it all, they are female, and that if you, deny, if you deny their femaleness, that then you're basically denying their transness. I said, where do you stand, you know, with, with your particular situation? Is being female something that you still acknowledge? And is that important or not? And then she kind of sort of brushed it aside. And she said, um, I don't even think about it. What's important to me is that, you know, we have housing and that we have jobs. She kind of went, took it in a completely different direction. Um, and then I thought, okay, now it's time to go in. Um, and then I said, look, to be honest, something along the lines of, uh, it's actually quite hard for me to, to hear you talking about yourself as a gay man because I'm a gay man and that's because I'm male. And the bullying I've experienced is because I was a certain type of male and that wasn't accepted. And I'm a gay man because as a male, I'm exclusively attracted to other males. And you didn't, you didn't have that, ex you said you only realized you were non-binary at the age of 20. So how, you know, you didn't have the experience of growing up as a effeminate so-called gay man. But I did. Then she said, and I do appreciate that. She said, yes, um, I didn't have that experience. But there's plenty of overlap. <laughs> and that's when I said, look, a homosexual, a gay man is a male homosexual or something like that. Um, then the organizer who'd been kind of tetchy and because um, at the other event, I raised a few things that he was not happy um, <laughs> with at all. He knew where I was going. So he basically said, uh, it's time for somebody else to ask questions. Does anybody else have any questions? And then uh, it, it's time to wrap it up. And 
I said, well, excuse me, this is a gay men's event. You know, if we can't talk about what a gay man is at a gay men's event, then then where can we? And basically he just said, he just addressed her and said, look, I accept you as you are. I accept you as a gay man and you're stunning and brave, blah, 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 all that bullshit. And I decided to leave it there because otherwise I would have got very aggressive. And I don't know what that would have looked like. I don't know if that would have served any purpose. I think I asked the questions and the others could hear it. And the two gay guys sort of in front of me who kept going, nodding along with everything she said, when I asked my questions, at least they kind of went, hmm. And it's like so many gay men, they've never given any of this any thought. So um, then it was just a bit of chit chat afterwards. Um, I avoided her. I didn't want to speak to her. Um, the divine feline, what a great name, says hello. Hello there. Um, somebody, Sophie, asked, none of the others were nodding for you. When I asked the questions, two of them, yeah, they kind of went, oh, yeah, hmm, good point. So um, I just uh, talked to my friend and the guy, you know, who'd been sort of looking at me from behind, uh, you know, uh, over his shoulder, go, Rrr. It was good to know that there was somebody there who just saw straight through it and just wasn't having any of it. Um, it would have been good if he'd also asked a question or said something, um, but he didn't. Um, so then um, we, we chit-chatted for a while just between the three of us, and then um, eventually we left. So that was that, was that talk. And um, it's, it's always so weird when you're in a room actually there and somebody's saying these things. And today I had a, another look at her Instagram and some of her Facebook posts. She uses hashtags that, um, like hashtag gay, hashtag gay UK, hashtag gay boy. You know, she's completely using all the language that, that, is, that, is, that is ours, that, that belongs to gay men. She even uses a slur, um, hashtag fag, F-A-G. She uses that on her posts, which is such an offensive word. You know, maybe gay men use that between themselves. I wouldn't accept that from any old gay man. Um, and so for a woman, for a woman, a woman to say she's a gay man and to use those words. I have no words, to be honest. Um, she's also a big campaigner. Well, a big campaigner. She's all for puberty blockers for minors. And um, she wrote a post where basically she said, not giving someone puberty blockers is a form of conversion therapy. What natural puberty is conversion therapy? It's like this is how far she's gone. I don't know if there's any way to come back from that once you've gone that far. Somebody just said she's role playing as a gay man. Absolutely, she's larping around, larping around as a gay man. And then there's gay men standing up and saying, This is stunning, this is brave. And the organizer going, I accept you as a gay man. Um, oh, Bianca Willoughby's back in the house. She says it's also called highly prejudicial, anti-gender, gender critical and anti-trans narratives, as well as anti-trans rhetoric in the UK that has been gaining baseless and concerning credibility. <laughs> baseless and concerning credibility. Baseless. Homosexuality is baseless. Heterosexuality is baseless. Come on now. Um, so let me just wrap that up. A woman is an adult human female. 
if trans women are women, that means males can be women. So then a woman is an adult human female is no longer true. You can't argue both at the same time. Secondly, and, and in the same way, you can't argue that a gay man is a male homosexual while also saying that a female can be a gay man. You can't argue those at the same time. I made up my mind a while ago. I know exactly where I stand. A gay man is a male homosexual. Male homosexuality is exclusive. It is not inclusive of females in any shape or form. Whatever they, however they identify, whatever they've put their body through, however they want the world to see. Female. There were no clownfish in that room, okay? Clownfish can change sex. Humans cannot. I didn't see a clownfish in that room. I saw a clown, but not a clownfish. A gay man is a male homosexual. Now, she's an author. She writes all these steamy uh, romance novels, and all of them have, like, big, hunky, like, Ugh! beautiful gay men on the cover, which, again, is just about reinforcing stereotypes. This is all about stereotypes and set up with it. Um, she now, by calling herself a gay man, and with all these others going along with it, she is actively taking part in rewriting the, the script on what it means to be a gay man. And I say no, absolutely not. No, just no. No. Find a way to find happiness without having to completely rip the rug of reality from underneath homosexuality. Try to do it without appropriating the culture of another class of people that exist within their own right. Try to do it without co-opting their language, appropriating their bodies, and trying to simulate and imitate the sexual functions of the sex that you are not. I'm not having it. Absolutely not. Blah. Any gay man who affirms her as a gay man is throwing homosexuality or the, what, what, the, what homosexuality is out the window. And it's interesting to me that if you misgender someone, that is somehow some kind of super sin. But selling homosexuality down the river is fine. No. No. I actually, I actually think it's, it's a form of identity theft. It's, it's a form of theft. And I'm not going to go along with it. I won't. And I call it out where I can. Uh, and now I'm thinking, I wish I'd been more gung-ho yesterday. But, you know, what happened happened. That's how it happened. Um, so there we are. That's how. And also, she says she's femme, right? Because she still wears dresses and makeup. And it's like, why is it that you can only accept yourself wearing makeup and dresses when you tell yourself that you're not a girl? Because if she liked it as, as a girl, but she didn't want to have the social pressures, so she can only be a girl if she tells herself that she's a guy. Anyways, I'm not going to affirm what I know to be lies. And when the emperor is naked, the emperor is naked, and she is a woman, she is a female. I might do a video on her uh, so you can see the pictures. Uh, I don't know if uh, there's other videos that I need to make. Facial feminization, surgery, part two. I know, we're going on about it forever. That's the next video uh, I'll be tackling. I promise uh, this weekend, this weekend, I will. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm three quarters there. I just need to finish it up. So hopefully I'll publish that this weekend. So sorry, you know what? I've really ignored the chat. Normally I'm um Bianca Willoughby says something like, so what? I don't care. Yeah, I don't care about your your stupid ideas. A gay man is a male homosexual. If you've got a problem with that, you're a homophobe, Bianca Willoughby. What is it about the name Willoughby? <laughs> so I'll catch up with the chat. Um it's five to nine so i'm guessing posy parker is gonna go live wasn't she amazing in the states i'll 
I love that woman so much. Okay, Reformist Tree on Sunday. So hope to see some of you there. Um, hope you enjoyed the chat. It was a bit of a heavy one, I guess. And um, working on plenty of other stuff. So more coming soon. I'm going to wish you all a very good evening. Um, and I might see you in the chat for Posey's video. So thank you for listening. Um, thank you for giving me a space where I can rent. And um, lots of love to you all. Look after yourself. And remember, no matter how crazy everything gets, keep it real and keep smiling.